how's it going? My name's Alex, and today we're talking about this law, the ELDT. Now, I've mentioned in a couple of my videos, hey, make sure you get your CDL or else you gotta go to school before February of 2022. And you guys keep asking me, Alex, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? And well, this is what I'm talking about, okay? So we're gonna dive deep right into it, what it is, what it requires, and why you should definitely get your CDL ASAP, or I mean, at least before February of 2022. Just a quick side note though, if you're wondering what Alex, why is your table right next to your bed in this hotel room? I actually dragged it all the way from the office over there or from like the living room area so that the sun or from the window, the light can actually make it you know nice and bright. So the first resource when it comes to looking up federal regulation in the transportation industry is your ECFR. That stands for Electronic Code of federal regulation or electronic code federal regulation they just sneak an oven there so electronic code of federal regulation title 49 subtitle b chapter 3 subchapter b part 380 that's exactly what we're talking about right now now you want to scroll down to right here subpart f it says entry level driver training requirements on and after February 7th, 2020. That is correct, I did say 2020 because it was supposed to go into effect on 2020, but then they delayed it to 2022. So let's get into the nitty gritty details. First and foremost, this ELDT, what the heck is it? And so right here in subpart F, like I mentioned, and we're in section 380-601, which is purpose and scope, right? The purpose of ELDT essentially establishes training requirements for entry level drivers as defined by this subpart and minimum content theory and behind the wheel training curricula. So the next question might be, well, Alex, who does this apply to? Okay, scroll down to applicability. The rule in this subpart applies to all entry level drivers as defined in this subpart who intend to drive a commercial motor vehicle, whether it's interstate or intrastate for commerce. Now, the important part is who this doesn't apply to. Right here, it says accept. And so one doesn't apply. It says right here, drivers applying for restricted CDL under 383, doesn't matter. Veterans with military CMV experience who meet all requirements, doesn't matter. Drivers applying for removal of restrictions, doesn't matter. Right here, uh, section B. Drivers issued a class A CDL class B CDL or passenger school bus or hazardous material material endorsement before February 7th of 2022 are not required to uh, are not required to comply with this subpart pertaining to the CDL or endorsement and it actually goes one step further individuals who obtain a CLP which is a commercial license permit right before February 7th of 2022 are not required with, to comply with ELDT if they obtain their CDL before their permit expires, okay? So right here in the law, it specifically says, as long as you go take the knowledge portion of the test, and the knowledge portion right now is you just walk into your DMV or you walk into any place and you pass the test. And once you do that, you're issued a commercial license permit. And as long as you get your CDL before that permit expires, you don't have to go to school or class or whatever this law is putting into effect. So now we know what the law does, which is standardizes training for all new CDL applicants. And we know who's it for, anybody essentially getting a CDL or upgrading their CDL. And we also know who's exempt from it, right? As long as you get your permit before February 7th of 2022 and you pass your CDL before your permit expires, you will be in the clear not having to take, your, the law basically doesn't apply to you. Now, what else does the law do? So another thing of the ELDT is because there's now standardized training, what does the government have to do? They have to regulate who can provide the training. And so when you scroll down to subpart G, it says registry of entry level driver training providers. And what this does is it establishes eligibility requirements for listing on FMCSA training provider registry. That's the TPR. To be eligible on the TPR, an entity must 
follow curriculum that meets applicable criteria set forth in appendices A through E of part 380. Utilizes facilities that meet criteria set forth. Utilizes vehicles that meets the criteria. Utilizes driver training instructors that meet the criteria. Now think about this guys, the government is telling a training or a college or a school or a CDL training facility all of these requirements and because they're telling that you now have to do all of these things don't you think the price of school is all of a sudden going to go up you're absolutely right it's definitely going to get more expensive so that's why if you're thinking about getting your cdl if you drive a hot shot right now and you've been kicking it off or you've been putting it off please 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 go study and get your cdl before it gets mandatory and really expensive all right now let's get into the final section so when we scroll down to assessments it says training providers must use written assessments to determine driver trainees proficiency in knowledge objectives in theory portions of each unit of instructions the driver trainee must receive an overall minimum score of 80 percent on theory assessment training instructors must evaluate and document a driver trainee's proficiency with btw skills btw is behind the wheel skills in accordance with the curriculum in appendices a through d so what that's telling you is you're gonna have to do tests and you're gonna have to have the behind the wheel experience how many hours of training am i required to get now like how long is this stuff going to take right and right here it says when you scroll down to appendix a of to part 380 it says right here there is no or oh, wrong right here there is no required minimum number of instruction hours for theory training but the training instructor must cover all topics set forth in the curriculum okay so that means there is no minimum that the school has to be so it doesn't have to be 40 hours at least or something like that the basically is you if you are really smart or you actually did your due diligence and you studied really hard all you essentially have to do is zoom through the class and prove it that you take all the tests right so if you pass all of the tests then you'll be good so you could really study in advance and just be better prepared the second thing is there is right here there is no minimum requirement for instruction hours for behind the wheel training so there's no minimum for education and there's no minimum for behind the wheel training now the next logical question is probably hey do we have to do this in class or online and i think after covid we learned that we can't force everybody to be in class because that's obviously not good however under the definitions just to prove it right under definitions it's 380.605 you can see right here it says theory instruction right this is what it means this is what the definition of theory instruction is and that is knowledge instruction on the operation of a commercial motor vehicle and related matters provided by a theory instructor through lectures demonstrations audio visual presentations computer-based instruction driver simulation devices online training or similar means okay so that means for the theory section you could more than likely do it online and then if that class offers the then like to do the behind the wheel training you then might have to fly in for the behind the wheel training and that's it so that would be a way a class could minimize the cost is by offer everything online with testing and if everybody and the people that pass then you just have to have to schedule a time you fly into wherever their location is and you just then just finish it the behind the wheel training right there on the spot so that's going to do it for this video where we dove deep into the cdl requirements that you guys kept asking about this law in february of 2022 now you know i don't have my cdl so take all of this with a grain of salt i'll link the ecfr down in the description below and i'll see you in the next video bye